Landing by Mechazilla Arms. This is the primary landing method SpaceX uses to achieve rapid and complete reusability. But what about missions with special requirements? Starship has always been designed with versatility in mind. In those cases, an alternative comes into focus. Landing on a drone ship using deployable landing legs, a method made famous by Falcon 9, becomes a viable option. So how would this approach change Starship operations? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is expanding in every dimension, not only in its flight objectives, but also in the scale of its operation. Beyond Starbase, SpaceX is now turning its focus to Florida, where two major launch sites are planned. These include up to 44 launches from LC-39A and 76 launches from SLC-37. Similar to Starbase, both of these launch complexes are expected to feature launch towers that exist with both liftoff and landing. But is that the only landing method under consideration? Of course not. According to the relevant environmental impact statement documents, some flights may return using a familiar approach that has already been mentioned, landing on a drone ship. There is no misunderstanding here. This method can be applied to Starship. To make this possible, Starship would need additional landing legs to maintain stability. Some have suggested that instead of adding legs, SpaceX could design a holding or securing system on the drone ship itself. However, this approach would likely increase both the complexity and the mass of the drone ship. If this method is adopted, Starship would operate in a manner similar to Falcon 9. Each stage would be equipped with foldable landing legs. The key difference is that Starship would land two stages rather than only a booster as Falcon 9 does. During flight, these legs would remain folded neatly inside the vehicle. As the vehicle approaches the drone ship, the legs would deploy to ensure balance and stability. The legs would likely remain extended during transport unless SpaceX chooses horizontal transport, as suggested in some earlier concepts. This leads to an important question. Why would SpaceX adopt this method when Starship was originally designed to land using Megazilla arms. In other words, what are the benefits? The first reason is mission diversity. Starship is expected to support many different types of missions. LC-39A may become a regular launch site for NASA missions. SLC-37, which is approved for Air Force use, could support a wide range of national security and military missions. These missions are likely to differ significantly from standard orbital launches. Some of these missions may require higher energy profiles. In such cases, the boost may need to carry the ship farther and to higher altitudes. This could leave insufficient fuel for a return to Starbase. This is where the strengths of the drone ship become clear. Unlike a fixed launch and landing site, a drone ship can reposition itself anywhere in the ocean to recover either Super Heavy or the ship. This flexibility allows the vehicle to optimize fuel usage during flight. In addition, while precision is still required, the landing constraints are generally less demanding than those of a fixed catching system. To support this concept, SpaceX has proposed a wide range of potential landing zones for Starship. These include the Indian Ocean, as well as the southeastern and northeastern regions of the Pacific. These areas more than demonstrate the operational reach of drone ship landings. For Super Heavy, proposed landing zones remain closer to home, including the Gulf region and the Atlantic Ocean. Beyond flexibility, drone ship landings also offer safety advantages. Because operations take place far offshore, impacts such as noise, vibration, or potential explosions are isolated from populated areas and nearby infrastructure. This directly addresses one of the primary weaknesses of tower-based catching systems. As future launch operations scale up, an additional landing method also helps distribute operational demand. Drone ship landings can serve as a backup if one or more launch towers are unavailable. This approach is not theoretical. SpaceX has successfully used drone ships for Falcon 9 landings for over a decade, achieving a very high success rate. While applying this method to Starship will be more challenging, SpaceX can be confident because it has already mastered the core technologies involved. The large operational range of drone ships as outlined in the EIS documents also makes it easier to expand Starship operations on a global scale. This approach will be especially effective until SpaceX is able to build launch and landing facilities in other countries. So how will SpaceX prepare for this landing method? The most immediate requirement is the addition of landing legs to Starship. These legs would allow the vehicle to stand securely on a drone ship. Implementing them would require significant modifications to the aft section of Starship. This level of transformation is something SpaceX is likely to face regardless. For many future missions, including lunar and Martian missions, especially early missions, Starship will need landing
landing legs because no catching system will be available. Designing and testing a leg-equipped prototype on Earth is therefore essential. Musk referenced this idea in 2023 when discussing Falcon Heavy landings, stating, and that's how we will land on Mars. In a similar way for Earth-to-Earth -Earth missions, landing legs would be required before catching systems are deployed, allowing Starship to land in a wide variety of locations. The second major requirement is the creation of a large fleet of drone ships. If each recovery region requires its own platform, at least five drone ships would be needed. Falcon 9 currently operates with only three drone ships, yet those platforms have enabled remarkable reusability achievements. To cover larger regions and higher launch rates, Starship operations would require many more. Not only would the number of drone ships increase, but their size and durability would also need to grow. Starship is far larger and more powerful than Falcon 9. Even with minimal remaining propellant, a landing stage could still weigh hundreds of tons. The landing thrust generated by multiple Raptor engines can also reach several hundred tons. For context, the landing thrust of a ship or Super Heavy using Raptor 2 is nearly equal to the liftoff thrust of Falcon 9, and future Raptor 3 engines will exceed that. As a result, a Starship-capable drone ship may need to be roughly twice the size of current Falcon 9 platforms. If SpaceX intends for a single drone ship to recover and transport multiple vehicles, those platforms could approach the scale of aircraft carriers. So, is this a landing method worth considering? If you think the answer is a yes, or if you don't think so, let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. From my perspective, this approach has significant potential. However, before it can become viable, SpaceX must address a number of important challenges. Most of these challenges arise directly from the preparations that have already been discussed. First, SpaceX will need to formally introduce a Starship variant equipped with landing legs. Since the transition from the Big Falcon rocket concept to Starship, landing legs have been removed from the design. To date, there has been no clear indication that SpaceX intends to reintroduce them. As noted earlier, adding landing legs would require substantial modifications to the aft sections of both the booster and the ship. This area houses the engine bays as well as the complex piping that connects the engines to the propellant tanks. Accommodating foldable landing legs would require a significant internal reconfiguration of these systems. Building a fleet of drone ships represents another major challenge. The sheer number required would demand considerable financial investment. SpaceX would need to acquire these platforms and then extensively modify them to support Starship landings and recovery operations. Beyond the number of drone ships, SpaceX must also confront the issue of turnaround time. The company intends to operate across multiple regions. Recoveries in the Indian Ocean or across distant regions of the Pacific are far more complex. Transporting vehicles back to Starbase from those locations would take several weeks. As a result, SpaceX will need solutions that significantly improve recovery and turnaround speed. In addition to maintaining a large fleet of drone ships that can operate in rotation, SpaceX may need to establish new launch and processing facilities. Locations such as California could support operations in the Pacific, while Australia Australia could support recoveries in the Indian Ocean. Building facilities in other countries, however, would likely present substantial regulatory and logistical challenges. Regardless of location, SpaceX must also carefully consider maritime transport routes. The regions identified for recovery are among the busiest shipping corridors in the world. SpaceX will need to ensure not only that landings are conducted safely, but also that Starship transport operations do not disrupt or interfere with other industries. Beyond the necessary infrastructure and operational preparations, SpaceX must also achieve several critical flight objectives. Many of these objectives are directly tied to landing performance and vehicle control. SpaceX must continue refining its mastery of vehicle control. Super Heavy can already be considered largely well-controlled as demonstrated by successful catches using the Mechazilla arms in late 2024 and early 2025. However, SpaceX is still conducting a wide range of tests to optimize performance. These include active flip maneuvers, landings at higher angles of attack, and landings using fewer engines. As a result, some recent Super Heavy flights have appeared less refined. Improvements will be necessary to maintain consistent and controlled landings while these changes are introduced. The challenge is even greater for the ship. This is evident from the repeated failures observed in early 2025. While improvements began to emerge toward the end of the year, the heat shield remains a significant concern and continues to present unresolved issues. Because of this, the ship will require even higher levels of control in the upcoming V3 flight series. The vehicle must first demonstrate reliable ocean landings followed by successful catch attempts. 
These achievements will be essential prerequisites before any drone ship landing approach can be seriously considered. Even though the final landing method may differ, the fundamental challenge remains the same. The ship must survive a long-duration mission, endure a demanding re-entry phase, and still retain precise control during the final descent. Re-entry itself remains one of the largest barriers to overcome. It's a critical gateway that must be successfully passed before SpaceX can fully commit to either Mechazilla arm catches or drone ship landings. This is where systems such as aerodynamic flips and thermal protection tiles must perform exactly as intended. Early indications suggest that SpaceX is placing significant emphasis on these areas in the V3 design, but their effectiveness will ultimately need to be proven in flight. In addition to landing performance, SpaceX must also ensure reliable execution of every phase that precedes it. This includes liftoff, ascent, stage separation, and orbital operations conducted by the ship. Only when each of these phases is consistently successful can recovery and landing operations proceed smoothly. All of these efforts are expected to converge in 2026 as SpaceX prepares for several major milestones, including the potential adoption of drone ship landings for Starship. Despite the widespread skepticism, Starship has already demonstrated remarkable versatility. This capability allows SpaceX to operate in multiple ways, with at least two distinct landing methods emerging as part of its future plans. In addition to landings using the Mechazilla arms, SpaceX is also working toward recovering its massive rockets offshore through the use of floating platforms, aka drone ships. The potential of this approach is clear, having already been proven in part through Falcon 9 operations, and it's expected to be further refined and expanded with Starship. As with any ambitious objective, bringing such a large and complex system to full operational maturity presents substantial challenges. However, this is SpaceX. It's a team known for pushing boundaries and redefining what is considered possible. The question now is whether you are ready to place your confidence in this landing plan. And with that, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up. Hopefully by the time this episode is uploaded, it will be New Year's Eve, so I hope you enjoy your holiday.